Good morning. Just that quick, the rainbows, oh, a cloud came by. Maybe they'll come back. Okay, this journal is called Being versus Talking About Being. And it's from 4-12-2010, the fourth one of the day. Uh, the Mayan day was eight vulture or wisdom. Don't know that I have anything to offer here. Feeling a bit out of sorts. The computer internet addictions got me down. I hate being mastered, even partially, by something outside of heart. Grrr. But anyway, fighting won't do. Why not? Because what you resist persists. Resistance makes it so, ties you to it. It's like attaching yourself to the thing resisted, sure to bring it into the life in one way or another. I never knew this saying earlier on, and I probably wouldn't have believed it anyway. I've seen enough and changed enough to know it's accurate now, though. How about you? Do you realize that all the things that you fight and fume at are, fume, fight and fume at and about, are just being strengthened in your life by your resistance to them? They can't leave you. You won't let them. It's also called being unwilling to be in the now, rejecting the present moment. That was the angle that brought this into perspective for me. Eckhart Tolle was the teacher who made it so very plain and simple, it just slipped right in. Now I realize that no matter what it is, if I find myself resisting something, I had better sit down if I can, if it's convenient, and make friends with it. It must happen sooner or later if I want to be rid of whatever it is, so might as well be now. I know it's strange if you're hearing it for the first time. I do recommend Eckhart's talks. He has such a plain, simple, no-frills way about him, yet he manages to get across some pretty earth-shaking concepts they seem to come in from under the radar, though, in some way. It's lovely. I'll find a link and put it in the transcript for you. It's our emotions that are our best instructors, not someone else. Someone else can talk to us and offer us guidance, but it's our own emotions that have the best lessons and the best gifts to offer. When we're resisting something, whether it's an idea or a chore or an attitude of someone else, it doesn't matter what it is. That's an emotion we're stuffing, we're trying to suppress. It's so much easier to point the finger of blame somewhere, to complain about this or that, to retaliate for some presumed wrong. All of that is just a refusal to sit with our own emotions and get to the bottom of what's bothering us. Some of us are blessed, like me, to have a close friend or two who are also understanding, even sensitive to us. These are great sounding boards, often able, in simple conversation, to help us uncover what's wrong within, to uncover what's bugging us. I usually go to the journal before the friend, though. It's totally amazing, quite uncanny, how very often illumination comes to me that way. It's practically miraculous. I don't understand it, so I won't try to explain. Explanation doesn't matter a bit anyway. Either it works or it doesn't. What good is an explanation? Does it add anything, change anything? Those with active minds, those not yet fully in heart with me here, will say, why, yes, of course it matters, and go on to explain why. Save it. Trust me, it doesn't matter. You only think it does. Your heart knows better. Why not check in there first? It's much more productive than any explanations ever dreamed of being. It's the difference between living and talking about living or thinking about living. It really is. 
explanations about anything are all mind stuff. That's useful, of course, but not worth all that much. It's not real. The mind is able to approach reality, to examine it, turn it this way and that, and report on what it sees. That is still only about reality. That is not reality itself, just discussion about it. Do you see? You are real. You live, you breathe, you experience. Mind can only examine these things. It cannot engage in them. It does not know what that is like. It only imagines. You get to be. It discusses being. Please say you see. This is perhaps the major distinction between being in head and being in heart. To be, you directly experience and know. Or to discuss that, to examine it, to imagine about it. All I can say is that this difference is huge. It's up to you to find out. <laughs>